Hello and welcome to another Let's Play. Me, Game Move Six. I'm Don Gorris. Before we start, if you're interested in playing this game, you can get it for free on HIO. But if you want to support the people that make this game and or get the newest version earlier, Patreon. Three dollars a month. So now in the last Let's Play. We went to go see the sunset with Devin, then came back to the house, uh, and we're kind of milling on our feelings with Devin, and hung out with Miko for just a little bit. And yeah, we have a crush on Devin, so we're seeing Lake, who has just got done uh, being a, or before the first minute, so uh, F boy, if you know what I mean. Is there a nice way to say F boy? That doesn't get you, like, shadow blocked on YouTube, at least in the first minute. Whatever. Set my face. Dark. Hey there, what's up? I'm all fine. He sits back on the bed and giggles, casting some doubt on his words. You had Torf over? I passed him at the door. Oh, yeah. We've been at the bar in town, and he went to stay around some more. We had to run to the bu for the bus and cut our conversation short. It's been such a nice day though, and the bar has been so good. I've never tried them before. Tiroff knows them because he was living in the area apparently. I didn't even know that before. I still have one expensive beer I brought from this trip in a fancy store. It, I was keeping it for some special occasion, but maybe you want some now? Not really, thanks. How are you feeling now? All fine. Almost sober now. What's up, though? I, uh... Now it's my turn to sit down, opposite the light line on Jorgen's bed. I glance at the ceiling before speaking, a nagging feeling in my stomach, making me question if it's really reasonable to even mention it. I need to get something off my chest. Do you have a moment, maybe? Sure. I'm still feeling the booze in my blood, though, so be patient with me, and do be like that. Jorgen could be back anytime soon, though. We can stay here if you don't mind, or find someplace else. My room? Sounds fine. Just, if you were bottom, please don't sit on my bed, sit on the chair. The curtain moves gently in the wind from the open window, the only part of the room that doesn't feel completely still. I lean back on the bed, facing the ceiling, the blank canvas that feels so distant and offers no comfort. A blank canvas. Wow. Dark, that's a lot. You sniffed the teacher's clothes and he caught you? Boy, you're thirsty. I know. Sorry. Don't apologize, that's cool. Also, I like getting other people's tea and drama. Though, a coach? I mean, I understand fully, he's a total beefcake, but still. Total beefcake? Did I hear that right? Like, don't tell me you're into him. Have you seen his pecs? And that handsome snout. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Like, lusting after a coach? Well, I'm not going to let you have him. You can have Torif. A jigsaw falls into place, and things start making sense now. Like Torif visiting Lake in his room. Now that I think of it, of course it's obvious. Lake is in the guise. Oh, we didn't know that before? That's nice. Makes me feel a bit less alone in all of this. It is kind of interesting doing it from our perspective where we're like, yeah, everybody in this place likes dudes, except for maybe Travis. I'm not sure. I don't know. But how every the main character's like, wait, he likes dudes? When this Anyways, if he were only a bit younger, my oldest boyfriend was 26, and that was really quite a gap. He was into this, like, show called... He was into this anime thing? I don't know, I was trying to think of something that would be old, but not old. So it would make some people be like, Oh, that's not old. 
watching Zootopia as an old. And he's like, what, 34? 29, actually. He's not that old. <gasps> I'm 34. Wait, did he say 34? Eh. Hmm. Dark, do you have daddy issues? What kind of question is that? I never even thought about it. I can only guess. Lake is joking. Not that I know of, no. I have a great family, just a bit uninvolved. And that's not that. Or at least, not just that. I... I like him okay. He's great. He's a great person, and I feel safe around him. I've seen him many times back at the uni, but after I started talking with him here, on the camp, I started to feel something. Those golden eyes, and that handsome snout. And yes, those specks too, covered in short fur, bulging out as he did push-ups yesterday morning, and also his musk. I see him in a completely different light than a few days ago. I'm not even sure what I'm feeling. Honestly, help. There's a swirling pool of feelings inside me, and something else swirling, and I don't have the names for any of them. But I could try to resist them. No, give in. Or make a leap of faith, and let them consume me. Probably take a leap of faith? I'm just a bit overwhelmed. Uh, let's see. Could anything be between us even work? Wait, could anything between us even work? What do I even want from him? A hand pat he gave me yesterday. I keep coming back to that moment. Sorry, I'm also trying to do something else. Like putting the thing that's like, yeah, that could be a typo. But you can't imagine how much I want them to just hold me tight. It to be like that. A lot of the time. I had a crush on someone before but it felt different. I couldn't cope with these, feelings, with these feelings either, but at least I understood them. What could I even want from Devin? Right now, I just want to snuggle myself into his muscular body and vanish in his arms. Again, it do be like that sometimes. Any advice? Honestly, I'll take anything. I don't know if I should. My references are pretty bad, you know? I never could get anyone for longer than a few months. I mean, what should I do? I guess you ask everyone else. Does anybody here have good relationships or actual relationships? Maybe Miko? I mean, he had a boyfriend. And they didn't seem to fall out. Rune's, you know, busy and shy. Jorgen likes being peed on. I don't know. Also, how's my face? Oop, maybe one more. What your heart tells you... It, wait, what your heart tells you is what you should do? I lean back and sigh. This isn't very helpful. I don't know, like, at all. You at least uh, seem to have some experience, unlike me. You know, the worst part is that I know he likes guys too, so that makes him a bit closer to my reach, but still so far. He's playing in the same team? Dark, this is great. This means you actually have a chance. A gulp. A part of me wanted to hear those words, but all the other parts are afraid to even th to even afraid of even the thought of it but what if i tried what's the worst thing that could possibly happen sorry i just got a phone call i was like wait what it's like it's not important it would be unbear unbearably embarrassing that's for sure but other than that also i never knew you're into guys why didn't you tell me I don't know. I just... It just never came up in conversation, I guess. There wasn't a good timing. You didn't tell me you like uh, about you before yesterday, either. Oh. I thought it was... It was... That was obvious. You've been with me 
with you've seen me with Anders once, haven't you? Anders, Anders. It doesn't ring any bells. No. I don't think I remember him. A Bernese. He visited me in the dorm. And by visited, I mean ooh ooh. That two meters tall guy? Right. I don't remember his name, but he was hard to forget. Wow. You two are together? I'd rather not talk about it, okay? Right. Sorry. Lake's ears draw him visibly, and he turns away, his red golden eyes turning a shade colder. Well, it's in the past, even if it still makes me sad. It do be like that sometimes. Sorry, I get sad so easily when I drink. He wasn't joking. We... He really got sad all of a sudden, as if a click of a switch. What a sorry view. Poor lion. I'm not really sure what I should do. So what I... So what I do... So I do what I would do with a close friend. I move closer to him across the bed, brace my shoulder to his, and let him lean on me heavily. He's warm and light. His fur fluffy under the fabric of his t-shirt. Do you need a cuddle? Yeah. And so, I lie down, pulling the line with me into a warm embrace. His head rests on my chest, mane tickling my nose, so that I have to twist my head a bit. His paw on, is on my back, the other running along our bodies. He clings to me, slowly relaxing. Even if my thoughts are still on Devon, this feels nice, holding on to someone warm and soft. It satisfies some deep need that I rarely remember about. Thank you. Thank you, too. What are you going to do with the coach? I'm going to do some in the next two days. Right. What am I going to do? I think. There's a concert at the Philharmonic tomorrow. I'll try invite him, inviting him and see what he replies. Philharmonic? No offense, but that's a bit of a niche thing. He might not be into that. I think he might be. At least, I know he likes music a lot. And I don't have any better ideas. Anything else I can think of is a bit too obvious. Well, good luck with this. Yeah, I'm gonna need some. Two wolves with headphones on the not right spot. Going back and forth. All the French I should probably use my face again. You know where my eyes are? They're up here. All the furniture in the cafeteria got rearranged for the film. The tables are lined up at the walls. Our food waiting on them, and layers of blankets are lined on the floor. There aren't many students yet, though the cafeteria is slowly filling with people. Looks like being on time for the supper wasn't high on the list of the parties for most today. I thought I could, I could come on time. I couldn't focus on developing the photos anyway. Now I scan the room for Devin. He's standing at the projector, tapping away at a laptop. I walk up to him, but he doesn't notice me until I greet him. Hey, what are you doing? Hey there. I'm getting the film ready to play. Oh, what are you watching, by the way? Prozik. Ever heard of it? I haven't, no. Urin recommended it to me, so I thought it would be a good fit. It's a comedy about a character moving from Berlin to the US. Sounded interesting enough to try it. Professor Arnie wanted to play a cosm cosmology documentary, but I convinced him that the lectures in the morning. Uh, I can that the lectures in the morning, that's enough knowledge for one day, and you could do some entertainment. That's what the lectures... Okay. Have you seen Rune, by the way? I thought he'd come for the film, but he's not here yet, and we're starting soon. No, unfortunately. Sorry. That's alright. I can't leave the cafeteria for now, but I'll drop him a message. I nod. Have you eaten already? I haven't. I haven't had the time. And you? I just arrived here. 
but I can wait for you until you're done with this. With this. There's a lot of time left anyway. Don't mind me. Go eat. I should stay here and keep it on the equipment. Uh, how about I bring food here? That would work. If you could, I'd be grateful. My legs slightly wobbly. I walk up to the table with food and grab us two plates and two glasses glasses and two glasses bottles of water uh anyways of anyways hurrying back to devon but walking past my entrance i bum into miko just entering the room luckily i managed to keep the plate stable and the food intact only the two glass bottles clanked together loudly oh hell sorry oh darn hey there what's up his eye he eyes the two plates I'm carrying with some surprise in size, but doesn't ask about them. I'm good. Spent half the evening working on some photos for the trip. I didn't feel like coming out much. And you? Very well. I visited Bjorn and then Travis, and then I talked to Bjorn. I talked Bjorn into going to the Philharmonic with me. I wouldn't want to go alone. I'd feel weird. So that's nice. Philharmonic. I still don't know any ideas about the concert. By the way, what are they playing tomorrow? Some Penderecki, I think. He's a Polish composer, but I don't know much more than that. At least, he's rather modern, so it should be an interesting concert. Not some Baroque frilocking, frolicking? Why are you asking? Thinking of going? I... Actually, I want to ask someone to the Philharmonic tomorrow. I thought it'd be a cool place to go together. Oh, nice. Who's that? Miko has been my friend for so long. I think I can trust him. He would find out anyway, if he was going there tomorrow. It doesn't make any less embarrassing, though. Devin. Oh. He blinks a few times, processing the information. That's also essentially... That's also essentially coming out of him, isn't it? Oh, that he doesn't know that I like dudes. Und fears surface from the depths of my con subcon unconsciousness. Of losing a friend over my sexuality. I know it's stupid for so many reasons, but... That's brave. I can see some hesitation in his eyes. Expression so familiar that it feels like an old, forgotten book from my childhood. But they clear up, hesitation giving way to a smile, a smile that I know is genuine. Nice, I'll be cheering you on. Really? Yeah, you really like him, don't you? You said some nice things about him. And if that's what you, you'd you like, then in the end, I'd, I'd like to see you happy. I exhale with relief. Only now I notice how tense it was sharing this with Miku. And finally, I relax fully. Thank you. I know this is unusual, at the, to say the at least. So, thank you for not judging me on that. That's what I think. But don't speak out loud. It's weird to be talking about it with someone I used to have a crush on. But it's good to feel that it's firmly in the past. Behind us, supposedly. I'd hug you, but I have both my paws full. Sorry. Another time. I'm sure there'll be an occasion. Okay then, and good luck. I grab food myself some food. Thanks. Have a nice meal. If Brunast Brunast mich. <sighs> that was stressful. No less than asking Devin out will be no less than asking Devin out will be. Though I dread that even more. You are sorry for the delay. I talked with a friend for a bit. Thank you. Uh, what's the food today? I haven't looked, to be honest. Looks like sandwiches again. That's nice. They make them really good. This time, they're all with horseradish and rocket? Yeah, I don't know. And I think that's beetroot. Plus, a small slice of pie with cashew cream. Really nice. Oh, that's good. Starting with the cake? Hey, nothing wrong with that. 
I'm an adult. I can eat cake for breakfast. Well, so it looks the tastiest. It does. I wish I could bake. I need to learn a few cake recipes sometime. Baking is hard. Eh, I doubt. It's not, I'm not that good at it either. And often, it feels more like alchemy than cooking. Do you cook? Quite often. I like it. It's relaxing. But with baking, you have to keep very specific temperatures. Mix everything only to a certain degree. Mind the aeration. And the cake doesn't rise. And then the cake doesn't rise anyway. And you don't know why. All in all, a frustrating experience. I did master a recipe for cinnamon rolls though. I love the ones they sell here, so I thought I'd learn how to make them at home. Devin sits down on the table with a projector, legs dangling from the edge. Nice. I love them too, though I think I like the ones with cardamom even more. They're nice too, and similarly easy to make. You just use cardamom instead of cinnamon. It would be nice to try Devin's bun someday, if you know what I mean. Got him. By the way, do you have some plans for tomorrow already? Not yet. Why? Hmm, Miko told me about a film harmonic there. Or here. There's supposedly a concert there tomorrow. Would you like to go, maybe? Hmm. Film harmonic sounds good, but I didn't wouldn't want to go in a huge group of students. Let's check the face. Oh no, I thought about going with just you. And Rune, of course, if you'd like. Hmm. Where are they playing? I'm not sure, actually, but I don't know much about classical music, so I don't think they'll tell me much anyway. I'll check. Wait, I'll check and tell you, okay? You didn't buy the ticket yet, did you? No, not yet. Want me to get them? I exhale with relief. It even I'd even do a small jump if I could, feeling just as if I won the lottery. I think we could just get him at the ticket office. I doubt a Philharmonic here would be popular entertainment. Fair. We can decide tomorrow then. I'll send Drew in a message if he doesn't come for the film. I haven't seen him yet since we came back from town. Have you? No, I don't think so. I bite into the sandwich, feeling much more confident now, my teeth piercing through the beetroot slice with a snap. By the way, what's the film about? Not sure. Supposedly, it's a well-known one. It was directed by Werner Herdhog. Hedhog? Whatever. I think... Uh, he's a popular German director. I think it's like Warner Herzog. Maybe. I don't watch films much. It's not weird that I haven't heard much about one. I've heard the same some... Heard the name somewhere, though. Hey, what's you? Do you watch films? I like going to movies. There's something nice about the whole experience. It's different from watching at home. Huge screen and lack of distractions can really transport you to a different place. I didn't have many occasions after moving here. I don't know which cinemas play movies with English subtitles. And yeah, that's a problem. I haven't thought about it, but then I wasn't in in the cinema there here yet either. What's your favorite film? Oh, I don't know. There are many I like. It depends on the moods too much. Besides, I don't think it's fair to compare action movies and psychological dramas with fancy epics. I couldn't decide on one. Scandinavian cinema, cinema is quite strong. Some of the films I've watched were superb. Too bad it's not well known, at least in the US. And you? I don't know. As I, as I said, I don't watch films too often. I'm more of a book or music guy. I've been thinking about what you told me about purging music on its own terms. It's literal. It's really useful. A useful mindset. I've never thought about it like that before. It is, especially if you're trying to get into something from a genre you don't you 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 don't usually listen to. 
Playing something in the background a few times helps to get familiar with the music too. I suppose that's why people love lis uh, listening to soundtracks so much. Talking to him, I barely registered that I finished the whole plate. Sitting aside, I leaned back on the table, listening. It's such a joy to sit here with him and talk together. A few days ago, I would never bet that would happen, or could happen. And frankly, it barely feels possible now. Oh, I think it's time. Go take a spot on the blanket. I'll start the film. I nod and get off the table. You staying here? Yeah, I'll watch from the back. I don't want to block the view. Taking a half-empty bottle with me, I walk away to the blankets, strewn across the floor, looking for familiar faces. There's Lake, sitting with Toruf. Grr. There's Jorgen, chatting with a you. I don't know, but I do. But there's also Miko, and I naturally gravitate towards him, pause, leading me to the empty space next to him. Oh, hey, how'd it go? He agreed. Or rather said, we'll see you tomorrow. But he seemed to be enthusiastic about it. Nice. You two have a connection, don't you? The lights darken suddenly, and the film starts. Next to me, Miko strains up. A spark of recognition light lights up his eye. Prozik? Ah, so it's a well-known film, and only I didn't know it. Is it nice? I don't know. I've only heard of it. But it's a head... Head knog. It's not going to be a light. Miko shushes me, so I lean back and start watching. Oh god, it's so boring. Clatter and bang. Mechanical world, forever repeating the same motions it was programmed to. Absurd. Credits. Finally. But the images stay in my head. Uh, there's a problem with this thing, because I because we have gone through about three episodes, and that seems to be the length of these things. I mean, I'll just quickly go look at this stuff. Down Cowris, or Chores. Oh, Rune Day 3 is the thing that's going to be coming up in a hot minute. Yeah, that's three for him, two for like four... Five for me. Was I mean slow with that one? Six for Miko. And three for Toruf. Hmm. I have to see. Oh, I guess we could, could just call it. Ooh, woo. So. Yeah, at the end of this, let's place a comment. Guys, I like comments. So much you like, dislike, tips, as always. If you like me, YouTube, and like to grow, then please like, subscribe, and check out the video. Subscribe, girl, and please run away near your animals to help control the population. And I think if we cut, if next uh, week's is, you know, finishes early, we'll just continue on the organ straight afterwards. You know? I just don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we could keep going. We'll see. Hey, Earth to Dark. Is half immersed, still half immersed in the film world. One paw standing here, the other on soft blanket draped over the cold floor. Look at Miko puzzled. Hmm? It's over, Eddie. You can get up. Ah, right. My joints crack one by one as I get up, stretching my limbs. How'd you like the film? Well, for sure, it wasn't what I expected. And I don't think Devin expected this, either. Wasn't it supposed to be a comedy? I think it was, at least in part, but it was mostly a tragedy. Yeah. I don't think I agree with it, though. It's a shame we didn't have a discussion panel or something like this planned for this after the screening. I... I don't know what to think yet. I have to process what I've just seen first. Well, the film stripped the characters from choices. Stuck them, uh, stuck themselves with themselves. Everything that happened to them felt predetermined, as if they were fighting not themselves, but some fate bestowed upon them. But I think choices are meaningful. I have to believe so. Otherwise, what's the point of choosing anything instead of lying flat on the ground? The outcomes of the choices aren't determined by us, 
So, they're shaping our lives. But they don't put us behind the steering wheel. We can't be in control of everything. But I would. But I wouldn't go into much, such extreme permission as the film. Pessimism as the film. I believe people can grow and change. I think we both did. And we don't have to repeat the past. I think I'll finish the day and go to my room now. If you'd like to talk or anything, I'll still be on my phone for a while. Thank you. Good night for now. The wolf walks away. Heavy, heavy the door of the cafeteria closes behind him without a sound that I expected. Perhaps fittingly, his absence here being a sudden silence, disorienting and unnerving, and left standing alone. The room slowly emptied in the meantime, just a handful of students staying here to chat. I glance back at the projector, just time to see Devin close the laptop, putting on his jacket, and heading to the door outside to the terrace. Last notes of the closing song still playing on the speakers, even if the projector turned off, the black lens like an empty eye. Standing outside, Devin stares at the moon, high up above the mountains, his paw feeling his pocket, as if looking for a pack of cigarettes that wasn't there. Does he even smoke? I don't think so. It wouldn't suit him. He's been kind of absent since we came back from town. Even when we talked before the film, it seemed like his thoughts were elsewhere. I thought he was just busy, but now it's obvious to me that there's something eating him. Wait, did I move back? Oh, huh. <sighs> like, I don't know. Because this could turn into a lot longer than it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, maybe give it 10 minutes? I mean, we did have, like, a short episode some time ago. And these things tend to be, like, one episode, three episodes each. Both the panther outside, the cold air of the arts at night biting at my face. It's chilling and refreshing. Grounding me back in the reality. Devon doesn't move. The dark silhouette against the backdrop of snowy mountains. Clouds. Uh, clouds of his condensed breath. Billowing and disappearing in the darkness above. For a moment, I consider going back inside. Leaving him here alone. But I'd like to at least say goodnight before going to bed. Each step, unsure. I walk up to the panther. My heart stuck somewhere in my throat. Hey. Dark. Evening. I'm sorry for the movie. I should have read more about it before choosing it. That happens. Honestly, maybe it's better we watch this instead of some action film. At least this one I'm definitely going to remember. What did you think of it? It was striking, but also fan fatalistic. Honestly, I don't think I'd recommend it to anyone. Oh, it was so heavy. I thought it was supposed to be a comedy. I felt bad about it. Sorry. I'm not... I'm not disturbing, am I? No, don't worry. It's a gorgeous night, isn't it? It is indeed. Being out here in the mountains, with the sea just behind me, there's nothing short of incredible. I could stand here like Devon for hours, and take in the landscape with its rough mountains and naked peaks with the moon shining bright like a lighthouse, beckoning us to walk through the forest as far as our lakes would take us. Yeah, I never knew this part of the country was so beautiful. I hoped it would be. When I looked at photos of Norway, there was mostly places like this one that I seen in the search results. I was a bit underwhelmed when I arrived in Oslo. The city itself is nice though, and the fjords on the west coast are only a few hours away by train. At least I've heard so. I haven't been there yet. It's a nice prospect. Never, th I, though I never, though I never had good experience with trains. They can be a little unreliable sometimes, but they're also comfortable and convenient. I bet. Maybe I should take one somewhere once we're back. There's a lot to explore in the whole country. I haven't seen anything other than here and Ansel yet, though. But I'm glad I'm living here. It, I like the ocean, and I like the cosmopolitan feel of on that Onslow has. 
Henslow. I'm still not sure what to think about the country. It's beautiful out here, but I still don't know. I haven't fallen in love with it yet. Oh? I thought you liked it here. I do. It's a step up in many ways. Though, when it comes to the beauty of nature that the U.S. doesn't have, Though, when it comes to the beauty of nature, the U.S. doesn't have anything to be ashamed of. And Canada, with its mountains and streams, wasn't too far either. But I haven't made my home here yet. I don't think I have friends. I have to rely on Rune if I want to go out or meet up with someone. And he has his own life. I've read half a dozen books since coming here. More than I usually read in a year. An immigrant's life isn't easy. Not at first. I know something about that too. My only two friends here are Finnish as well. There's a certain barrier that's, uh, that's hard to overcome. You moved here in the summer, right? Yeah, in July. That's four months here. That's not much yet. Things could still change. I know. I thought Devin was our coach for a hot while. But I don't know how to make things, how to make the change happen. I thought I was moving forward, but now I feel like I've reached a fjord, and I'm treading around in one place. Why the sudden doubts? I thought you were happy with the move. Devon sighs, looking back at the guest house. The few lights are on, making the wooden house look like a lantern, a safe haven in a dark wilderness. The panther looks like he's battle battling himself, unsure of what to say, or how much, as his brows furrowed. Just normal doubts. Moving abroad is a huge decision. But you already moved here. Is something wrong? You seem absent today. I hope this isn't about me. I doubt it, but there's still a possibility. And it's eating me up. Finally, he straightens up. His face relaxed. Form uh, before tensing up again. I got a message from my ex. He had, he said breaking up was a mistake, and asked me to come back and move in with him. But you tried and broke up already. And you said you never liked it back there. He broke up with me. I have no words. I feel like the ground has opened up around me, gaping earth swam me whole. I just want to tell you. I don't know if I'm considering it yet. We've renewed contact barely a month ago, and I already have a job here. But it got me thinking about coming back. Coming back? I would be just giving up, and after a few months. And I wouldn't ever see him again. It seems like an awful idea. He left for a reason, and now he'd go back to square one. I can't help but feel like I don't belong here. I moved here, hoping it would solve all my problems, but I, I took most of them with me. I can't press him to stay. I don't feel like I should ask him about the message or his ex. Things are way too private to prod. What can I do? You're in a country where like 15% of the people here are immigrants. Everyone belongs here. Thank you. I'm happy you think so. Wait, 15% of people in Norway are immigrants? Now, how many people in America are immigrants? I mean, if you're not counting the people that came in like 300 years ago, or 200 years ago, or 100 years ago, or something like that. Uh, percentage of Americans that are are immigrants. Okay, 13.6% are foreign-born. I guess foreign-born would be the word. Still, I need to think. I'm not making any decisions just like that, on the spot. And thank you too for talking with me. I'd hoped to catch Rune to get things on my chest, but he disappeared somewhere. So, thank you for listening to my ramblings. Honestly, I feel a bit stupid. It should work out the other way. I should be there for you. I'll get six tickets to the Philharmonic tomorrow, okay? It's my treat. You don't have to, 
I can pay for myself. It's no problem. It's no problem for me either. By the way, how about we move back inside? They can see you're cold. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, whatever. We make our way back to the warm guest house. Sweet smell of cake still permeating the cafeteria, cozy and uplifting. The combination with the dimmed lights. Devin takes off his jacket, throwing it onto one of the tables, before diving under the table, re-emerging with a bottle of beer. I thought some beer after the movie would be nice. I only have one, though. Do you want to share it? I nod readily. Some beer would be nice indeed. It feels like a natural companion to an evening like this. We set the table again, panoramic windows before us, the world outside like a painting. Wait, are you above legal age, aren't, uh, drinking age, aren't you? Legal age here is 18. I can be trusted with a beer. Besides, if a bottle, even I, even I would barely feel it. Right, I still can't get used to it. Aren't American kids stuck at home in suburbia for most of their childhood? We're walking, we're walking to a school myself since the first grade of primary school. I'd say we start being responsible. We start being responsible beings a bit earlier. Devin opens the bottle with a Swiss knife he kept in his pocket and hands it to me and takes a swig without thinking. I thought I'd go fetch his glasses. Ah, sorry. I thought you want to take a sip. Uh, not just hold it. You want me to take a sip, not just hold it. But if you don't mind, I don't mind either. Devin takes the bottle from me, pressing it to his lips, and taking a big gulp, drinking at least thrice what I did. Also an indirect kiss. I glance at the label. It's a usual beer. I think the most popular brand in the country. It tasted bitter, but drinkable, just like no beer. Incredible how quickly and easily some company puts him in a good mood. He only must be feeling lonely here. It wouldn't have been better back in the US. A voice at the back of my head say, says, and I'm right here. Is it true what people say about beer in the US? That it's canned piss? Not literally, no, but it's just bland. Even the standard corporate beer here is better. But at the same time, the US has the best craft breweries in the world. So we both we have both ends of the scale. Some of the craft beers are crazy wild. You wouldn't even guess their beers. A friend of mine once gave me a bottle of a pastry sour that was like 40% fruits. It tasted like a funky smoothie. Huh, what else did you try? Some IPAs, but I didn't like them. I don't drink much, really, usually. I only keep a bottle of wine at home. But today, I felt like remembering small times. You know, sitting on the porch with someone closer on a summer evening, looking at the stars, drinking bottle after bottle, staying up late into the night. Got a bit nostalgic, especially after the message. The message. I'm happy to spend time with Devin, but I feel bad about this, considering something's wrong, and I'm worried why Devin even seems to be considering it at all. He has, he has a flat here. He has a job like he, he says he likes. He has people to meet up with. Maybe less than he'd like to, but the beginnings everywhere are hard. I take another swig of the beer. Devin passes me the bottle. Bitter taste floats in my mouth, but I'm more used to it this time. It tastes good, and I take one more sip before passing the bottle back to Devin. His fingers brush against mine, warm and soft. A stark contrast with the cold glass below my pop hats, and a current runs through my spine, making me shiver. I glance at Devin, but he's looking outside. I don't think he knows anything. What the message say, if I can ask? It's, uh... It's quite a lot. It's mostly got me thinking about the past year. It's re It really was a good time for me, at least for a while. I think he was being serious about it, he wrote. 
It's been a terrible, lonely half year, like you wouldn't believe. It rained on my house all summer, then autumn came early this year. After all it feels, during summer, almost every place is warm, but when autumn comes, there's scarcely a scarcity of warmth and light, or a scarcity. You have to eat and stay warm in warm places to replenish it. The ground is soaked and slippery, and the moisture robs you of the warmth too. It's a terrible time to be alone. I spent the days at home, mostly. I got a new place near Toledo, with a big garden, not far from the hotel we used to go to, and for days I sat on the porch, thinking. The time we had together was the best time I ever, ha ever had in my life, alone or with anyone. Since you left, I have never stopped missing it. The truth is, I never wanted you to leave. I was tired of living like this, together, but afraid of showing ourselves, always in secret. I thought I could make a change your mind about it. It was my fault, and my fault only, that it ended. I went to therapy and saw all my mistakes. I understood. I didn't give you the space you needed, and I tried to make you rush things you weren't ready for. I apologize for all of it. Toledo. I could never find the closure after you let Dud announce. I was so happy you replied to me at the end. I know it wasn't easy for you. I didn't understand the drain I was putting onto you. Now I do, I understand how I've hurt you. I know I can't take back my words, but I promise I can make it up to you. I can't change the person I was, but I can get better, and I know that I will, for you. If you'd like to return, I'd love to meet with you again. I know you hated your place. If you need one, you can still, you can move in with me. It's a lovely part of town. I know you'd like it. I'll send you some pictures in a moment. The phone clacks against the table. Outside, the sun is setting, painting the sky blood red. Another day ends. I lean on Devin, sitting next to me. I think he's glancing at the door every few moments, making sure no one walks in on us. But I don't lift my head to check. He's like a stolder, sturdy boulder I can rest my weight on. The fur on his naked arm is short and sleek, different than I imagined, but so nice to touch. His scent is so comforting, like sunshine facing my head, filling my head, woody, masculine, and deep. I could get myself drunk with it if I stayed like that for, too, for long enough, and close my eyes and give in to the feeling. This is bliss. I spread my arms and start swimming downwards. The deeper I am, the brighter it gets until I'm swimming in a sea of light. We have ships at sea, drifting in all directions. We're wanderers, walking in the desert in search of an oasis. The wind blows relentlessly, pulling us apart. But each time we see one, it's only a mirage, mocking us. How do I find a respite in all this? Anything solid and stable. A foundation. Something to hold on to. There's a safe haven. But where's the safe haven? The welcoming arms we yearn for. As your heartbeat synchronize and move out of phase again, there's a moment when we can reach out and find each other. But we shy away in the last moment, afraid to be open, afraid to show ourselves. Until we learn to accept ourselves. It keeps going. Heck, I was hoping this would... That... I don't know. I was thinking it was going to be short. I buried the memories deep down. Suppressed them. And now they came back to me. A labyrinth of the past. Unresolved. I never got over him. He's the first person I ever truly loved. The thought of coming back makes my heart sing. But then, there are the, emo the memories... We've been through so much in such a short time. A good, the good and the bad. This time leaves my ability to read. Bugger. I wasn't the one to break up. 
But I wasn't... But wasn't I miserable back then, too? I picked up the bottle from the table, long empty, and just hold something in my paws. Just hold something in my paws. I wish I had another. Or two. I had to be like that sometimes. Hey, everything alright? Yeah. I'm just a bit tired already. I got a bit homesick, or I got a bit homesick already. Though, you're right, I never really liked it there. Nostalgia is one hell of a drug. I glanced at the watch. Tells me that we've been here for an hour already. This, and the alcohol. No wonder I'm getting sleepy. Huh, it's really late. I must just smile, hoping it looks natural. I'll be heading to my room. Tomorrow, we'll have another long day ahead of ourselves. I get up from the table, straighten out my legs. Empty bottom of my right paw. I need to clean up here first, though. I'll see you tomorrow. See you. Before he can turn around and leave, I give him a warm smile. This time sincere. And thank you. It was nice talking with you. You've made my, you've made my day, and I mean it. And likewise, thank you. He looks away, closing the door behind himself. I chose poorly with regards to time. Eh, I think that might be a good time to call it, I guess. Are we still what's his name? Yeah. Well, we're Devin now. So that's gonna be the end of this let's play. Yeah, you can only do so much. Ooh woo. So, please comment, because I like comments, same as you like, dislike, tips, because always, if you like me, Japan likes it, girl. And please like, subscribe, and check out the videos, happy girl, please first spay your apple, stop control the pit population. I thought this was going to be a short episode. Bah! And, yeah, if you want to play this game, it's available for free on itch.io, but if you want to make this game, and or get the newest version earlier, Patreon. You do be like that, sometimes. And, until next time. But say three dollars a month. Yeah, until next time, sweet me. Game of six of Don Chorus. So thanks and see ya.